and welcome back to another episode of me talking about weird old niche Warhammer lore. And today's story is a tale as old as time if time started in 1987. And I don't think it did, but I don't have a concept of object permanence. So anything before 1992 just kind of doesn't exist. This is the story of a well-loved Warhammer miniature range, which for a very long time just kind of vanished without a trace. That's right, today we are going to be talking about one of my favourite 40k races, the Homo sapien rotundus, aka the Squats. Now I think there's probably like by this time a hundred different well-researched videos about squats and their history and the lore, but that's not really what I love about the squats. That's not what I want to talk about in this video. This video is going to be a history of the miniature range itself, from its fantastic explosion beginning in the 80s to its sudden and mysterious disappearance, and then its very recent reappearance as a very different looking 40k faction. And as well as looking at the history of the miniatures, I'm going to also show you how I like to paint some particularly eye-catching squats. And I'm really excited for that section of the video because it's a real passion project for me. I base the miniature on a very familiar piece of squat artwork, which some people may recognize. So make sure you stick around for that as well. And if this kind of video is the sort of video that you like or you'd like to see more of, then please like and subscribe and also shoot me a message down in the comments section and maybe like give me some more ideas for these kind of videos because I love making these lore painting videos but I really want to keep up to date with what you guys like to watch so let me know. But without further ado let's get in our way back when machines and travel back in time to a very strange part of Games Workshop's past, the dawn of the stunty. I'm calling it that. <laughs> We're going with it. In order to understand where squats came from, we need to go even further back in time than even Rogue Trader, Warhammer 40k's initial and first rulebook. Some sources say that the printing of Rogue Trader was delayed due to things like Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay being released around the same time, and for that reason, we occasionally stumble across Warhammer 40k miniatures which conceptually predate Rogue Trader itself. And these miniatures seem to be very much the building blocks of a lot of the races and factions and warriors which we've come to know and love in a 40k universe. Let's take a look at this flyer from May 1987, which features and advertises a very mismatched group of mercenary miniatures. You can definitely see the early resemblance of things like Imperial Guard-like troops, power armor, and even proto-rattlings here, but perhaps most importantly, we also have a very special character. It's Iron Bonts the Squat, and he is the very first squat. As much as it kind of downplays the immense creative talent it took to come up with Warhammer 40k as a system and it's become like a little bit of a joke, I think that it's definitely fair to say that the squats were inserted into the system Warhammer 40k to be the space dwarves. In the same way that Eldar are the space elves, so it's like fantasy but space, and then the space orcs are the space orcs but then they became just the orcs with a K instead of a C because space. I think that's essentially what they were doing with squats, and it definitely is. Either way, Iron Bonts became the first ever squat miniature, and looking at him, I can definitely see the design choices which make him a fantasy dwarf but in space. Fantasy tropes of dwarves usually depict them as short, sturdy little people with a lust for mining and precious metal, very heavy armor, and big bushy beards. And Iron Bonts certainly fits the bill with his very heavy armor, and I think that the wires coming out from under his helmet and his chin maybe were supposed to resemble an industrial beard, which I think is really cool. I think that's a quite a cool design choice. But despite Iron Bonts being undoubtedly an icon, he kind of fell into obscurity a little bit, as with the release of Rogue Trader, Games Workshop really fell in love with his miniature range and beckoned in the golden age of the squat. The year is 1987 and Rogue Trader has just been released and if you're cool, which I think you probably are, you're chilling out at home listening to some really cool music and getting excited for Warhammer 40k and buying a new set of miniatures. And inside of Rogue Trader there is a section about the Imperium of Mankind and once you've read up on your Space Marines and your Rainbow Warriors and your Psychers and your Rogue Traders, there is a section about Abhumans and in that section we find the Squats and a little bit of information about them. 
And we are going to read that right now. The little excerpt about the squats from Rogue Trader because we love a story time and we love Rogue Trader. And if you can, I definitely recommend getting your hands on a copy of Rogue Trader because... Approximately 10 hours later. Highly recommend that you read along. <laughs> Generations of life on high gravity worlds have caused changes in the physiques of long established humanoid populations. They have a tendency to become short, averaging 1.4 meters. And for British people, 1.4 meters I think is like 4 foot 6. So in the comment section, you can play Are you taller than a squat? And yes, yes, I am taller than a squat. Thank you. <laughs> Humanoids of this appearance are known as squats, but also as dwarves and by other often less than complementary names. Along with physical changes, squats have associated psychological adaptations, which make them extremely practical and skillful with weapons and technical equipment. They are especially intolerant of aliens, especially orcs, who they loathe and despise. In the Imperium, squats are the only abhuman type commonly seen occupying positions of authority, even entering the priesthood and the ranks of the Inquisition. They are tough fighters and are regarded by many as the most reliable warriors in the army. So the squats are just grumpy, old, short, bearded men who aren't easily befriended, which means they sound like a lot of my friends, therefore I love them very much. But despite the fact that squats seem to be quite a small section of abhumans and paled in comparison to like the big space marines and the Eldar and the warriors of this time, the miniature range for squats at this time just absolutely exploded. In fact, according to the good people at Goonhammer who have written an article about this subject, and it's fantastic, I'll link it down below so you can read it yourself. They claim that squats were in fact the biggest range of figures in the initial Rogue Trader pre-launch, offering 20 squat sculpts to Space Marines 13, Space Orcs 17, and Space Elves having just 12. So let's take a little look at some of the incredible miniatures that the squat range had to offer at the time. The first wave of squat miniatures were featured for the first time in the Thank You Mr. President flyer, which came as part of White Dwarf 93. And I just want to spend like two seconds talking about the Thank You Mr. President flyer because it's such a bizarre little bit of Games Workshop history and it's a great hidden gem when you're researching the history of the squat miniature range. The flyer shows the White Dwarf himself shaking President Ronald Reagan's hand and thanking him for lowering the price of the dollar so that Warhammer could be sold at a cheaper price in the US. USA. And it's just an incredible little pocket of Games Workshop miniature history and I love it very much. This flyer gave us our very first range of squats who were all named infantry characters and they could be bought for the very very low price of five for only £2.50 which more than anything makes me wish I was alive back then because by now I would be like super Warhammer rich. If Warhammer rich is a thing I would be it. This initial delightful range of infantry miniatures with their jumbled mix of like heavy weapons and smaller weapons like las pistols and stuff, it continued to grow and to be advertised in various Games Workshop publications. They were still sort of unsure whether they were calling them squats or space dwarves, so they kind of like swapped in between the two. And more publications like White Dwarf started to feature squats more heavily. There would be articles which featured more artwork and banners and history and lore and rules and we started to see the squat range reflect that as a larger variety of miniatures became available to everyone. The squats featured in their very first dedicated box set called Devastators which included a Space Marine Land Speeder, an Imperial Guard Tarantula and a squat mole mortar. White Dwarf 111 featured imagery of the squats being like cool biker riders and we saw this reflected in the miniature range with these fantastic bike gang looking squat miniatures. And this is a theme which I think carried on throughout the range. So like cool biker helmets, sunglasses, raggedy beards and weird little rebellious slogans became sort of a staple in the artwork at the time and this is especially present in the artwork in Rogue Trader. We start to see things like command squads come up for squads which followed the basic unit composition that we still see for command squads today. The units usually have a captain, a musician, a standard bearer and a bunch of little guys and I particularly like the musicians in these command squads because they've got like these big 
big speakers on their back and these sunglasses and it almost looks like they're playing a synth and I just think they look really cool. I love them very much. In 1989, the Squats received even more love and a variety of new additions which buffed out the range even more and they even started to move into the modern era to include minis with plastic arms and weapon upgrades. Miniatures like Chaos Squats, who were the mechanics and armorers of the Chaos Warriors of 40k, were also added and they started to expand their lore even further with the addition of things like living ancestor miniatures who acted as the squats version of psychers. And of course my favourite addition to the squat miniature range is definitely the exosuits which are like glorified golden big killer stompy egg miniatures. I absolutely love them and yes the exosuits also had motor trikes because that's what the kids wanted in the 80s. They wanted killer eggs on bikes is definitely marketable, smart decisions. <laughs> and despite the amount of love that the squat seemed to be getting in the 40k miniature range, the squat train was by no means slowing down at this point. Games Workshop's miniature miniature game Epic was ironically pretty huge back in the day and our favourite little short kings got even more attention in that range. And I think that the kind of like smaller scale aspect of this game gave the miniature designers a lot more freedom to sort of go a bit crazy and really experiment experiment with what the squat range would look like if it was a lot bigger. As a dwarf-esque mining range you'd expect there to be a lot of like big industrial looking vehicles and that's exactly what the epic range gave us. We saw a very interesting and much more dwarven take on the squats which included the iconic squat land train and flying vehicles similar to the gyrocopters we see in dwarfier factions of Age of Sigmar and Warhammer Fantasy. By the end of 1989 there were around 150 squat miniatures available to buy and according to online sources who worked there at the time, they weren't selling badly either. But then something happened and something changed and the squat started to disappear. There had been a slight cull in the squat miniature range before Epic got released, but by the time second edition came out there was still plenty of miniatures to pick from and importantly squats were still supported in the game. But during this time there were no new squat miniatures being made, bar a few prototypes which never really made it out of the studio and into a public release. And by the time third edition Warhammer 40k rolled out there was no longer any support for the squat miniature range and then in 1997 the Epic range went away and with it came a really big silence on the squat front. But why? Well the truth is that around that time nobody really knew why the squats had disappeared into obscurity. There was a bunch of like rumours and speculation about if the squats had sold really badly and that's why they took them away but no one knew the answer for sure until 2004 when Jervis Johnson, a highly respected and regarded Games Workshop game designer, hopped online to answer a few of our questions. The full post made by Jarvis Johnson is a really interesting read so I'll definitely pop it in the description box so you can read the whole thing. But the general gist of why Jarvis said the squats disappeared is just that they didn't think that they did the race any justice. Jarvis says in his post, we felt that we had failed to do the dwarf archetype justice in its 40k incarnation. From the name of the race, squats, what were we thinking, through to the short biker motif, we had managed to turn what was a proud and noble race in Warhammer and other literary forums where the archetype exists into a joke race in 40k. We only fully realised what we had done when we were working on second edition of 40k and try as we might we just couldn't work up much enthusiasm for the squats. And the mistake we made then, deeply regretted since, was to leave them in the background and the get you buy army list book that appeared. With hindsight we should have dropped the squats back then and saved ourselves a lot of grief later on. This is a pretty tough read for people like me who genuinely love the silly and wacky nature of the squats but it seems to be the main reason that the studio just couldn't muster up much enthusiasm for developing the squat range any further at this point. But at the same time I totally understand as a creative person myself it's really hard to start something with good intentions and be really excited and then as a project continues sometimes you look back at the beginning of the project and you regret some of the design ideas 
ideas or choices you made at the beginning and you kind of fall out of love with the project as a whole. Some of the sillier beginnings of insert fantasy race in 40k were probably just not holding a candle to some of the better more established ideas in 40k like space marines and the god emperor and the imperium of mankind and even races like the Eldar. Those were becoming very good solid fleshed out lore concepts whilst maybe biker dwarves in space wearing sunglasses was just a little bit too silly for the studio at that time. And with that the squats stayed quiet and they continued to stay quiet for nearly 30 years. But even during the quiet time there were occasionally just these tiny inklings and easter eggs which maybe hinted that the squats were still part of the 40k universe. Battlefleet Gothic had what many people considered to be one of the very first attempts at a reintroduction of the race into the 40k universe in the form of the Demiurg, who were said to be a mysterious group of spacefaring miners and traders. They shared a lot of similarities with the squats of old from their technological advancements to having a hatred of the orcs, but they were cited as being in alliance with the Tau, which was a very interesting twist. There's a brief mention of the entire race being completely devoured by an unknown Tyranid High Fleet in the 6th edition rulebook and there's also a very brief mention of the race Homo sapien rotundus in the 8th edition 40k rulebook. But given the huge amount of time that these two or three or four however many it was tidbits were sprinkled over it really didn't feel like anything at all. And then after so so many years something incredible happened. In 2018 the first squat miniature in nearly 25 years was released by the specialist design studio. What? <laughs> In 2018 the specialist design studio at Games Workshop released Grendel Grendelson the Squat Bounty Hunter for their game system Necromunda and as someone who worked in the studio at the time that this was being done like this was a huge deal like everyone was so excited for like the first squat miniature in 25 years it was a great vibe. And if you look at the advertising that went with Grendel Grendelson at that time you can see how much they hammed up the fact that this was like the first squat miniature in 25 five years and we were all acting like starved little orphans What we didn't know at the time and what I guess nobody knew because it was rightfully a very well guarded secret in the studio was that right on the horizon was the reintegration of the squats into the 40k universe as a permanent feature. The leagues of OTAN were announced in 2022 and it seemed that after 30 years of trying the studio had managed to do the concept of space dwarves in 40k some real justice. The leagues of OTAN are very much removed from the squats of old and they don't look much like him either, but if you're careful and you look hard enough there are a few nods to the original lore and the miniature range. Unlike the squats who were aligned with the imperial forces in 40k with other abhumans like ratlings and ogrens and even occasionally beastmen, the leagues of Votan very much have their own separate and slightly more well developed culture which doesn't align with other imperial forces. Without giving too much away on current Votan lore because I think it's really cool and definitely going places, the Votan and the classic squats do share a certain affinity with very old technology. Technology which could be considered heretical in nature if it was ever discovered by the Imperium of mankind. As well as that the concept of living ancestors lives on in the Leagues of Votan range as you can see in the Grimnir miniatures which are essentially living ancestors and the lore is quite similar. I think they still kind of like channel the power and wisdom of all their ancestors into these bizarre psychic powers. I really like the Leagues of Votan. I I think it's a great miniature range already and I especially like the Necromund ones which are like that little mining box where you get all the little mining guys. I think they look absolutely fantastic. Their design language being a bit more tilted towards like Scandinavian and Viking iconography is also very smart as it gives the miniature designers a way more focused idea on what the range should look like in the future and that means we'll get better more cohesive miniatures which is exactly what we want as customers. But I think I'll continue to 
collect and paint my old squats from a very long time ago for a very long time because I think they're sweet. I think their hand sculpted faces are charming and I like their sunglasses and their motorbikes and their surfboards and I think they remind me of a time where Warhammer 40k was maybe just a little bit sillier and a bit more fun and that makes me very happy. So I guess for me the squats never really got squatted at all. And speaking of miniatures which make me happy it's time to paint up this little guy. This little guy is Captain Kirk and yes that is his actual name. I think it's probably another one of those fun little rogue tradery references to pop culture at the time and I love him. I love Captain Kirk. He's great. Now I have a bunch of squats which are painted in the original colour scheme of like green and red and white which match the artwork at the time but occasionally I like to mix it up and have a little bit of fun with my squats like I did with my Grendel Grendelson miniature. I really want to try and like recreate that synthwave colour scheme but on an older miniature because I think it'll translate really well but I also wanted this piece to like reference one of my favourite old pieces of squat artwork which is in Rogue Trader and it's this bit of artwork here which shows a squat with a surfboard or a skateboard that says like slam sector and he's got sunglasses and it says gimme danger on his shoulder pad and I think it's just very much encapsulates the feeling of old squats and I love it very much. It's my favourite little bit of squat art that exists. That's kind of the creative vision for this squat so let's see how it manifested in reality. For his skin and hair I wanted to make him look like a younger squat so I built up a nice saturated pink and orangey skin tone and as usual I gave him a big pink nose. His hair was super simple and again I kind of wanted to make him look like a surfer so I decided to go with bleach blonde hair and I think this lighter beachy hair colour and his burnt looking nose really sells the story that he spent some time at some kind of Warhammer beach resort if those kind of things exist. The clothes are actually much simpler than they look and similarly to when I painted Grendel Grendelson I just chose a few colours which scream synthwave. Now synthwave as a concept isn't as popular now as it was when I painted Grendel but if you want some inspiration just look up synthwave colour palette online and I'm sure you'll get loads of ideas. The main colours I go for are very saturated tones of purple, blue, yellow, orange and pink and icy bluish white. I tend to stay away from any muted tones as we want this guy to look like he's been put through a highly saturated filter when he's done and to help me do that I just use a method in which I highlight with brighter colours instead of lighter versions of the colour. I know that sounds a little bit confusing maybe and this method is pretty hard to describe and I'll probably end up doing a whole video on how I paint in a very saturated style but there's a few good examples on this miniature which demonstrate exactly what I mean. For example instead of highlighting the purple coat with a lighter purple which we could make by mixing in a whitish tone with our original purple colour I instead highlighted it by steadily mixing in brighter and lighter saturated pink tones. And the same goes for the orange. Instead of highlighting it with a lighter orange mix I use a bright saturated yellow which helps the whole piece look way more bright and colourful at the end. And now it's time to paint my favourite part, the whole miniature, which is his tiny little surfboard or skateboard. Either way, it's radical. I started by badly sculpting a tiny surfboard using some green stuff. I literally just like smushed up a sausage shape and I'm sure you can probably do it much better at home if you want to give it a go. And then I base coated the surfboard using a dark bluey green gradient. Now a fun little easter egg about this piece is that the design for the skateboard actually exists in real life but I wanted to change up the colours to match the more synth wavy colour scheme that I went for. Now it's time to move on to the free handing and the way I chose to go around this was to have the reference picture up at all times so I knew what I was copying and I started by using a lighter colour to kind of block out the shapes that I wanted. I spent some time on this stage refining and going back in with my base colours to clean things up until I was really happy with the shapes. And then again using a very tiny brush tip I started to plot in all the coloured areas using my blocky shapes as a guideline. After all the colours were in I gave the whole piece some black line art to really make it stand out and then I spent like 10 minutes suffering and crying over some of the smallest text freehanding that I've ever done but I think it ended up just about readable so yay me. <laughs> And personally I really like how the final piece ended up. I think that apart from the fact that he seems to have lost his hat surfing I really managed to capture the charm of the original black and white artwork whilst also giving it a big splash of colour which is exactly what I wanted to do in this video. 
I wanted to kind of honour the old miniature range and the artwork which I love so much and remind you guys that Warhammer can be colourful and bright and a little bit goofy sometimes. But I'm afraid that's all I have time for today so I really hope you enjoyed the video, thank you so much for watching and thank you for being rogues, I'll see you in the next one. Bye!